Ladies, um, whew, that was good. <laughs> I wasn't it. It was just so beautiful. God is so beautiful. Um, I'm gonna, is this better? So I'm not, I think, can y'all hear me still, but it doesn't sound airy? Is that better? A little bit up like this? Okay. Um, I'm going to now introduce you to our very special guest, which we all know most likely, <laughs> because she um, is on uh, Facebook and um, a lot of other places with our, our wonderful Pastor Troy, and she is a wonderful woman of God who loves the Lord, and we all get to see that every day when she gets online, and, and even I always enjoy when she gets those moments um, where she's shining, where the Lord just opens the door for her to shine because he has things that he gives to her to share. And it is such a beautiful revelation. And I hope you guys have been enjoying a lot of her um, writings that we've been having her post and she's been posting on Facebook, on our women Facebook page because they are inspired and they are Holy Spirit filled and they are changing lives. And she is such a beautiful friend, a beautiful mother and a wonderful servant of the Lord. And I'm just so thankful for you, Tabitha. Let's welcome Tabitha Murphy. Yeah, we love you so much. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so good. The royal so call. Good. Here you go. <laughs> Who's that woman she's talking about? I want to meet her. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Hey, everybody. Oh, okay, you guys. Well, I actually just want to start out in prayer because as you all might think, like, I'm super, super brave. But it's totally different being in front of a camera than it is to be in front of people and speaking. So I'm just going to invite the Lord in, kind of let him calm my nerves here, and then we'll just get right into it, okay, guys? All right, so King Jesus, uh, your presence is just so welcome here. And thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to speak to these beautiful women, both here in this place as well as online. Thank you, Lord, for the courage and the boldness to step out in faith and speak this message. And thank you, Lord, that you have a special word for every single heart that's listening. Thank you, Lord, that I am going to give my testimony and my interpretation of this vision, Lord, but that you have interpretations that are so unique to every single person here because you have unique relationships with them. Thank you, Lord, that you love your daughters, that you rise up, you defend them, and you call them to be defenders as well. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you trust us and you honor us, and you call us royalty. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, okay, that didn't help much for the nerves, but you know what? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for showing up. All right, so a little backstory. This vision um, actually came to me in April of 2019. Now, I call it a vision because it wasn't a dream. This actually came to me. Um, I was in the shower just talking to the Lord, and I saw this whole thing just pass before my eyes, like, to where it's like my memory is actually this vision instead of being in the shower. And when I finally got out of the shower, like, 15 minutes had passed by that it felt like nothing, and I was like, oh my gosh. And so then I think Nicole was the first person that I went to about the vision and was like, what is this? And she was like, write it down. And so immediately that very next day, I wrote it down. And so I've been really struggling with, should I tell the vision from memory or should I read it from my writings? And after careful thought and practice, I'm going to actually just read the vision from my writing. I will speak a little bit into some places that I feel like there was a little bit more that I should have written down that I didn't. But I'm going to just read what was written and... I really hope that I'm a great storyteller. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so here we go. So I was standing in a line, like at a carnival. Maybe I was waiting for a ride. I'm not sure. I just know that it felt like a circus, like a huge entertainment. Step right up, just show me, show me, show me. There was someone that was just throwing flamethrowers. There was fun houses. There were carnivals, but I knew 
that everybody was just busy. They were just filling their time with empty things, all of this entertainment to flash before their eyes, to, to distract them, but it was nothing of substance. And so a man walked up to me in the line and he said, you are standing in the wrong line. Will you please follow me? Now in this part, I am a strong, I'm an independent woman dressed a little bit too sexy and I don't trust people at all. I'm very rebellious and I'm just used to taking care of myself. And so when I looked up at him, his eyes were gentle and it was something that I, I didn't understand but I just knew in that moment I could trust this person. And so I just put my hand in his and I said yes. He leads me into this castle full of royalty. They were all dressed in gold and purple, all extravagant and beautiful, and everything was extravagant. There was a grand stairway that marble floors, gold trim, like whole nine yards. I quickly became angry. I felt tricked and deceived. I was thinking how foolish I had been to follow him into this place. I was only being brought here to be shamed and made fun of. That's what I felt. I wanted to run away. I thought to myself how silly and stupid I was for falling for his tricks. Like, I do this all the time, constantly thinking I can trust men just because they're smooth and appealing. I ripped my hand out of his and said, why have you brought me here? Look around here. I don't belong here. Look at these people and look at me. What have you done? I need you to take me back. But again, and, and just as gently in his eyes, he looked at me and he said, you do belong here. You look around. Tabitha, you were lost. That's why I came looking for you. I looked up and everyone was looking at me. They were smiling, they were clapping, they were coming up to me, hugging me, saying, Tabitha, you're here. You're here, where have you been? We've missed you. We love you, we are so happy that you're here. And the celebration, this party that I had just walked into, was for me. I couldn't believe it. I like looked around and I was like, mm, could this be true? You know, of course, we're all a little skeptical still. <laughs> Amen. I felt in that moment like the movie Orphan Annie. Because I started to go through flashes of moments, just years and years, just flashing before my eyes and it, it, like flashcards in my mind. And one point, I'm running around the castle, and I'm just so amazed and in awe at everything in the castle. Mostly, though, I'm amazed that I have full access to everything, that there is no guards at any doors that are going to keep me from going into rooms. I'm going into the study and into the library, and, and it, it just amazed me that as I would walk up to a guard, because there were definitely guards there, but that they would just step out of the way and just let me in. And I was like, did y'all see what you just did? You know, like I didn't feel like I had full access, but I did. I was amazed that everyone knew me and that they cared for me and really loved me. I was so excited because I had this huge bathtub and a huge bed and a huge walk-in closet, like dream room in this castle. <laughs> and I'm just so in awe that this is my room and that this room belongs to me. I go to the movie theater in there, and I'm in the playground, and, and I'm even amazed at the little tiny cups in, in the kitchen and stuff. I just remember, like, in this vision, I'm just sitting there at the table in the kitchen while the maids are prepping food, and I'm just talking to them about how cute the little cups are. <laughs> I was just, I literally, like Orphan Annie running around, I was just running around like, oh, can I touch this, and can I play with this, and is this mine, and I can go here? like. That's what was going on. <laughs> but I also see hard moments. I see moments of struggle. Like, though I had a really great bathtub, I didn't know how to use it. And at one point, in trying to figure out how to start it, I break it. Just defeated. <laughs> I don't know where things are in the castle and I get lost constantly trying to get back to my room. There's a time when I'm at this huge dinner 
and I'm looking down at the table setting and I don't know what fork or knife to use. And I just get so defeated in my heart, like, again, just feeling like I don't belong. I even put in here that it, it felt a lot like Ariel and the Little Mermaid. And I'm sorry for all the movie things, but look, I grew up on movies, okay? <laughs> but um, like you brush your hair with a fork, like I just didn't know. And I would just get so embarrassed and I would get so frustrated. And I would get so moody and I would yell and I'd be like, see, I told you I don't belong here. I can't do this, this isn't me. I don't know what I'm doing here and why you have even brought me here. But everyone in the castle was so gentle and patient with me through these temper tantrums, because that's what they were. I, and whenever I couldn't figure out the place setting, I throw all my food and I'm just, I, there's this vision that I still have where I'm actually curled up in a, in a ball, in this ball dress, and one of the women that was sitting next to me pulled around and just hugged me while I'm crying and I'm fighting and she's just strong enough to just hug me. And they were understanding and they cleaned up after me like whenever I did throw everything around, I didn't even have to clean up my mess. They came and started cleaning everything up. They held me when I screamed and cried. They comforted me as I broke down and showed me that I am not alone. They worked through these temper tantrums with me and they slowly showed me what it meant to be loved through things. And as time went by, my tantrums got a little less crazy, less often, less out of control, and I wasn't running away as much because I didn't write this part down, but in one flash, I saw that the man came back to me. I was on a mattress next to a, um, one of those metal trash cans with a fire, and I was just out with the homeless, and I didn't have any bottoms on, and I was just laying there, and he picked me up while I was sleeping, and I just saw this happening, and he brought me back into my bed because I ran away a lot because I didn't want to be there. So I decided that I wanted to be who they thought I was. Like a wild horse realizing it is better to have a master I realized this is what I want. I want to submit to this life. I decided that it was time to take it seriously and really learn what they are trying to teach me. I actually decided that I was going to watch them. And even though I didn't know what I was doing, I was just going to mimic the other people in the castle and just like, just do what they do, walk their walk, follow them. It, whenever I was sitting at the table, I saw what knife my person next to me picked up, and I picked that one up, and I was like, I'm just going to figure this out. So I started taking my studies seriously, and I actually became a straight-A obedient child. I was absorbing the lessons like a student in a classroom. Everyone was so proud of the transformation I was making. I grew up, and I was ready. I was comfortable in the ca castle. I felt safe. I was happy, I was so happy. And I really realized I belonged. Like I really grasped, oh my gosh, this is where I am, this is where I belong. I fit in. There was no difference between me and the other women in the castle. I had arrived. <laughs> but then the man came back to my room and he knocked. I was happy to see him and let him in. I was telling him all the stuff, that, stuff I learned. I was telling him how happy I was and I was thanking him for coming and getting me, for finding me. I remember in, in this vision, I saw like I had like this royal dress and was like putting it up to me and like spinning it around, like so happy it was mine and was like just trying to show him that I got it, that I matured, that, I'm, that, that I've got this, like look how much I can do now, look at all this stuff I've been doing. It was showing him like little paintings that I had painted, painted like all the other girls and stuff. I was just so appreciative and I wanted him to see that what he did for me made a difference, that I really did transform. He was smiling and listening attentively. He was so happy for me and so proud. He would just sit there and nod his head. And he, 
his responses, it's like he meant them. Like when he would say something like, oh, that's so good. I'm so proud of you. Like, I love that you did that. It was like he truly met them. So, but whenever I was done talking, because as a gentleman does, he waited for me to get through all of my excitement. He began to speak and he gave me a directive. He told me, I have come to you because you are ready. And I'm asking you to partner with me and help me find the lost. I need you to go back where I found you and I need you to help me lead them here. I was immediately upset yet understanding. My heart sank and I was hurting of the thought of leaving. I told him, you want me to go back? I can't go back, I love it here. Don't you remember who I used to be, what I used to do? Don't you remember all the times you had to come back and find me and out there again because I ran away? Don't you remember, why would you ask me to go back? He told me that I won't go back to do the things that they do, but that I would go back, show them how much I have changed and tell them to come that I would help lead people to him, and that I was strong enough to go out there and go back different. He explained how they need me to find them. I knew what I needed to do. I knew I needed to go back. I thought of my family that was still out there, all of my friends who were still out there. I thought about how I didn't know that I didn't belong there and that I really belonged here and that they don't know that, that either. But they need to know. I was reminded of a model that I saw when I was in Israel in the Holocaust Museum. And this was a model of the Jews, and this model impacted me so much when I saw it. It was the, the most important thing I saw in the entire museum, and that museum is huge, and it takes a long time to get through it. But this model was of the Jews going into the gas chambers. And it was actually, they were going down and it was like a controlled environment of sand and, um, and benches. And what it was, was it was them thinking that they were going there on vacation, that this was a safe place, that they were being safe from the war and the bombs. And so they were going underground. And so all these people in this model were happy having picnics, building sandcastles. But what the Nazis would do is they would shut the door and they would fill it with gas and they would kill them all. They were just deceived. <laughs> they didn't know and nobody told them. And the reality was that they were headed to death and so was everybody at the carnival. No matter how fun it seems, no matter how happy it is, no matter how entertaining it is, it's empty. I needed to go save them because they trust me and they will believe me because I've been them. So I stood up, I looked at him, and I said, okay, I will go. That's the last part that I wrote in this. There was actually another portion right after it where I and walking up to a line to a little 14 year old girl. And I looked at her and I smiled and I said, you're in the wrong line, please come with me. And she came with me. And that was actually the end of the vision. So this entire vision, hopefully you got what I got out of it, which is that we are all called for more. And we're all called to the castle. We are all royalty. None of us, nobody on this earth belongs at the carnival. And though the Lord can come and meet you there and bring you back to the castle, there is an opportunity for us to partner with him, to be mature like him, and to go and gather the lost who are deceived and have no idea that they're just in a line towards death. So I actually have some scripture verses that I wanted to present to you guys, just in case y'all didn't believe me that y'all were royalty. <laughs> so my all-time favorite one is 1 Peter 2, 
9 and 10. It says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him. So catch that. You are to proclaim the excellencies of him. What does it mean for me to go back out of the castle and go back into the carnival and to show them that I've changed? I am proclaiming his excellencies. You who are called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You were called out of the carnival and into his castle. Once you were not a people, once you were dead, once you were headed to the gas chambers or the carnival, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Then there's 1 Peter 2, 5, that says, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I love that I got to the castle through Jesus Christ. I hope you all caught that the man was Jesus. <laughs> if you didn't, there you go. But that we're being built up through Jesus. I love that. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 says, To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our gospel makes me think of the testimony that you'll have when you go back out there. When you go back out there to them and you are completely transformed, that is the gospel. And that is how we reach people to obtain the glory. And then let's see here, Galatians. Galatians 1, 15, 16. Now this is actually Paul speaking personally, but we can take this for ourselves. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace, called you out of the carnival, not because you were doing anything right. Let, it, let me tell you, I was not a pretty picture when he reached out his hand and asked me to come with him. But it's by his grace. He was, replete, he was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Why did he do it? So that we could preach him among the Gentiles. Then the last one. Oh, that is the last one. All right, there we go. Okay, so you guys, this is what I want to do. I want, I'm going to ask you guys to be bold. I want to do two different prayers. So the first prayer that I want to pray is for those of you who know you are called and chosen, but you keep running away from the castle. <laughs> I want to call those who do not feel yet like you belong, like you, you, you can't go back out there. And if you do go back out there, you'll get caught up in it. I want to pray for the people that don't feel ready for their call yet, because we're all called, but it's okay to not feel ready. <laughs> But I want to help y'all with that. I want to pray for y'all for that. So if there's anybody that feels that way, I want you to be bold and I want you to stand up. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, look at that. Y'all are perfect. Thank you guys for standing. All right, are y'all ready? All right, so King Jesus, you see how they're humbly coming before you and saying that they understand that they're called. They know that they're royal. They hear it in their mind, but they haven't quite, quite grasped it in their heart. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to do a heart work in them, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you to show them and reveal to them, just like you did to me, that they are called, that they are chosen, that they have a a calling on their life that only they can fulfill, that there's people assigned to them that only they can rescue. And I thank you, Lord, that you are teaching them, you are walking with them. I thank you, Lord, for the grace that you're providing for them. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that they are being hugged in their mess. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that when they throw their temper tantrums, they're not being judged, but they're being honored. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are loving them through this process. I just pray for acceleration over them, Lord Jesus, that you will accelerate their time frames and that they will stand boldly ready to carry out their call as soon, 
soon, Lord Jesus. Do it very, very soon. I thank you for them, Lord Jesus. I thank you for their heart. I thank you for the way that you made them. We thank you that you're so faithful to answer this prayer, and we just wrap these prayers up right now. We send them directly to your throne of grace, Lord Jesus, and we ask your angels right now to come on assignment to every single prayer I prayed, and thank you, Lord, that you know what they need, so you answer their needs. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay. So this means the rest of you need to stand up because now I want to stand up to everyone that is ready to step into their call. (laughs) I better not see. No, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Now she's ready. Yes, everybody. That's a good, that's a good thought. Everybody better stand up. You are all ready. (laughs) All right, I'm going to close that. All right. So, King Jesus, I thank you so much, Lord, for the vision that you gave me in 2019. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you instructed me through Nicole to write it down so that I could stand here today before these women and read it off to them, Lord Jesus, and let them see through a visual effect that they are called and they are chosen and that they are royalty. They may have been lost, but they are now found. And I thank you for that, King Jesus. I thank you for the work that you've been doing in them. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work that you continue to do through them because we know, Lord Jesus, that even though we're ready to go back out into our call, we know that we still got a lot of work to do. (laughs) And so I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you have called and chosen every single one of these women here as well as online, Lord. And I thank you that you have specific people assigned to them that they are going to bring into the kingdom. I ask you, Lord, to start revealing those people to them. Start giving them those encounters, Lord Jesus. Start presenting their life as a witness of you to these people, to where these people actually question what makes that woman different. Make them bold to invite them to things like this women's, this women's meeting over here tonight. Make them bold to, to send a message and say, hey, this was a really great sermon. You should check it out. And make them bold, Lord Jesus, not for the Christians, but for the lost, for those that are stuck at the carnival, for those that don't know that they're in a line on the way to death, Lord Jesus. Make them bold to speak to atheists. Make them bold to speak to witches and warlocks. Make them bold, Lord Jesus, to speak to anybody that has a God that's not you, to say, you know what? You may be worshiping that idol, but that's because you don't know the true God that loves you, that cares for you, that takes care of you no matter what you do, that stands with you through every single temper tantrum, that will catch you and find you whenever you run away, the God that actually knows you and puts you together and knitted you together. Let me tell you about that God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that their words are anointed, that their actions are anointed, Lord Jesus, and that these people are going to desire what's in them. They are going to shine bright. They are going to be a light in the darkness, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for that. I call them all royal priesthoods, ready for their call. And I just declare right now, Lord Jesus, not one of them is going to be lost. Just like what you said in John 17, that I have found every single one that you called me to. Every single woman here and online is going to say that at your throne on that great day. They're going to say every single person you assigned me to, I have brought into the kingdom. So thank you for that, Lord. It's by your merit and not ours. It's by your grace and not ours. And it's by your word and not ours. So do it, Lord, for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. That's all I got.